get it started. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about interpretation of uh, consciousness. What does it mean? How does it happen? Okay. You are asking about the interpretation by the consciousness, of the consciousness, and for the consciousness. Right? <laughs> so, let us understand this whole phenomena of what we call as world, what we call as God or consciousness, and what we call as our experience. Okay? In reality, there's no world, there's no other, there's no nobody other than pure consciousness, Brahman. In reality. That's the only reality. God only is there. Brahman only is there. But everything else appears to be there. The world appears to be there. Living beings appear to be there. I am there. You are there. All we are appear to be there. You have to understand the difference between appears to be there and really there. So the, to understand this, we can give a dream analogy. I go to sleep and have a dream. In the dream, I become a businessman. I make a lot of money. Then some thieves come, steal the money. Then I get up. So in dream, everything appears to be there. Business appears to be there. Money appears to be there. Thieves appears to be there. Everything appears to be real. When, when you are experiencing the dream. Right? The moment dream gets over, nothing is there. Nothing was there. Can I use the money what I earned in dream? Can I use anything in the dream? I cannot use. It is not there. It appears to be there. Right? So what appears to be there, but not really there, is called Mithya. But there was Satya also. What was Satya? The person who was sleeping and dreaming, nothing happened to him. The person was sleeping and dreaming, nothing happened to him. So dream character appeared and disappeared. Right? So similarly, the entire universe is a dream of Sriman Narayana. You have seen Narayana? How he looks like? Picture? Sleeping. Right? And he has a dream. In that dream, the world, the all the living beings, all those people appear. Okay. So now let us understand dream of Narayana and dream of ourselves. So let us say you go to sleep. Uma goes to sleep. Now Uma or you in the sleep will be different character. The body, our body, waking state conditions, house, everything changes. A different world opens up in dream. Right? In the different world, you are a different person. Maybe a young girl, maybe some other place and some other family. So, but what happened to the person who is sleeping? Sleeping person is there only. But dream appeared in the sleeping person. In the dream, you go through happiness, unhappiness. But does it affect the sleeping person? It doesn't affect. The dream character is nothing but a sleeping person only. You only appear as a dream character, but you don't know that you are the sleeper. You, are, you don't know that you are sleeping. You only appear as a dream character, enjoy the dream or suffer in the dream and wake up as a sleeping character and wake up in the morning. So there are two levels of reality at any point of time. The sleeper and the dream character. Okay. Both realities are exiting simultaneously. The sleeper is there who is not affected by the dream. The sleeper is there who does not know the dream is going on. Sleeper has no clue that dream is going on. Why? Because sleeper is the dream. <laughs> okay. When, when the sleeper is the dream, the sleeper does not know the dream about the dream. Understand? If you are the dream, then you cannot know the dream. Once, if, once you become the dream, the sleeper becomes the dream, then you cannot understand it. Okay. So then what happens? The dream character sees I am separate from the dream world. Then dream character separates from us. Dream character, happiness, unhappiness, all those things felt. But who is the real dream character? Real dream character is who? The sleeping person. 
But the sleeping person itself does not know it's a dream. The sleeping person is called higher level reality. Dream is called lower level reality. The lower level reality, reality experience is happening. Right? Higher level reality, there's no experience happening. Because higher level reality is the experience. No, no. No, no. It is, don't mix up it. Every time I say something, it's separate. So, the sleeper is the dream character and dream world. When the sleeper has become dream character and dream world, sleeper does not know the dream world, dream character. He is happy all the time. It is like saying, water appears as ocean and wave. Water appears as ocean and wave. Because water is the ocean and water is the wave. Water doesn't know water, ocean and wave. So similarly, sleeper does not know the dream world and dream character. Is it clear? To know something about it, you have to separate from it. Others you can't know. So what happens? The sleeper appears as a dream character and dream world and separate itself from the dream world in the form of dream character. Otherwise, it can't experience the dream, dream world. You need a separation. So dream character appears and feels I am separate from the dream world to experience the dream world. Otherwise, you can't experience Right? Now, the dream character is nothing but sleeper. Sleeper only is the dream character. <coughs> appearing a dream character. But apparently has separated out from the dream world. So now, what's happening in the dream world doesn't affect the real sleeper. The real sleeper is higher level reality. The dream character is a sleeper appearing as lower level reality. Is this clear? So now, this appears at the universal level. This is at the individual level. Universal level, the sleeper is nothing but Sriman Narayana, Parabrahma. Okay? So he has a dream. His dream is called Maya. Right? Have you, see, have you seen the, uh, any picture of Narayana? Sleeping. Sleeper. He is a cosmic sleeper. Okay? And his sleep is called Yoga Nidra. Okay, not unconscious thing. In Yoga Nidra, a dream is projected. Have you heard in the chest of Narayana, Sri Devi is there and Bhu Devi is there. This side. In Tirupati, if you go, Sri Devi and Bhu Devi. This is not chest. Deep inside the consciousness of Narayana, Sri Devi means the total universe. Bhu Devi means earth plane. Both are there as subtle concepts or ideas in his uh, consciousness. And that gets projected. How many universes? Billions and trillions and trillions of universes, all living beings appear as a dream character. You should be very happy. You're a dream girl of Narayana. <laughs> okay. So far you're thinking that you're, you're a dream girl of that fellow. <laughs> Actually, that fellow is also a dream character. <laughs> All of us are dream characters projected by Sriman Narayan. Parabrahma. Now, who is the character who is experiencing the dream? Everything in the dream is the Parabrahma only, Narayan only. In your dream, tiger appears, elephant appears, forest appears, is nothing but you only, sleeper only. But sleeper doesn't know. No. Sleeper is higher level reality. Similar Shiva Narayana is a higher level reality. He is not bothered about the dream. <laughs> right? And to take care of the dream, in the dream, Shiva Narayana becomes the Vishnu, the ruler of the dream world. Okay? So, when in the dream, when you are in the dream, you forget that you are the sleeper. High level reality is forgotten. Similarly, Sriman Narayana takes the form of Vishnu. Vishnu doesn't forget Sriman Narayana, but he starts ruling the world. All living beings, all characters are nothing but Sriman Narayana only appearing as that. Living beings, non-living beings, everything. The totality. 
the problem is the experience is not possible until you separate from the totality. So he separates from the totality in the form of jiva. The totality separation is not real. It's a dream happening. But when his dream is happening, this it appears to be real. Okay. So then the moment you separate to experience the reality, suddenly you forget yourself. Because reality seems to you or the what what not real, dream world. Dream world or Maya world, right? It appears to be so overwhelming. Not seeing the world. Don't, I mean, listen carefully, right? There's some more. So, what happens? He gets into dream. Okay? And the dream world is projected. Gets into dream, forgets himself and starts experiencing the dream world. It starts overwhelming him. And forgets. It goes on millions and trillions of lifetimes goes in that experience. It's exactly like, no, you watch a Netflix serial, serial number one, serial number two, you get lost in that until why your wife comes and kicks you. <laughs> or if people start playing video game, you are forgotten yourself and playing the video game. Or you're in a job or profession, everywhere we forget ourselves, lose ourselves. Similarly, experience overwhelms us. Okay? In the oral make experience, it's lost. That way, Sriman Narayana appears as minerals, plants, animals, living beings, non-living beings, sun, moon, star, planet, galaxy, everything is the appearance of Narayana. But in the form of Jiva, he experiences that. When he experiences Jiva, Jiva forgets himself the original nature and gets involved with the body-mind complex and starts experiencing life. Forgetfulness is there. And experience is there. This experience is overwhelming. The joy will be overwhelming. I want happiness, I want happiness. Or suffering is overwhelming. The real nature is never remembered. So the journey starts from mineral kingdom. That's why it said, God sleeps in the minerals, stones. What do you mean to sleep? Sleep means forgetfulness. God forgets himself completely in the stones, minerals. That forgetfulness and unconsciousness. Okay? And God starts waking up in plants. Some life form, prana shakti, some life form growth happens in plants. And God starts dreaming in animals. Animals are like a dream character. Animals are like living the dream world type. They don't have analytical ability or uh, they, they don't have uh, discrimination and higher abilities, lower abilities, like a dream. And God starts knowing, becoming aware of himself in human beings. Because human being has a higher faculty, intellect and uh, abstraction ability. And finally, God realizes himself in Dnani. So God requires Dnani to realize himself. God cannot realize himself. God requires Dnani to realize himself. <laughs> so all of us, our living beings, are nothing but instruments of God to experience the world. In various ways. So God has infinite ability. Infinite knowledge infinite ability to take infinite life forms. In each life form, he starts taking one experience. Each, each life form is one viewpoint of God. Millions and trillions and trillions of ways God has experienced himself in the, his dream. It's called Maya. So, there's a gradual from mineral to plant to animal, uh, animals to human beings to enlightened beings, there's a gradually, progressively, awareness grows. 
self awareness who am i so god knows himself in the form of nani i am brahman i am brahmasmi sarvam kalvil brahma this happens in nani in the stone he is unconscious okay now in the entire creation the funny thing is the stone is blissful the entire creation misery is only for human being <laughs> other guys are not miserable <laughs> the entire universe the sun moon star they are unconscious in unconscious they are moving blissfully unconscious is bliss god is blissful bliss of god is never lost okay animals are blissful because animals don't have to worry about past or future animals only worry about the present moment present moment is fear hunger thirst yes security here so animals are blissful why animals don't have to worry about tomorrow yesterday they will take care of present moment they live in the present moment that's why they are not blissful they are not they they have pain but they don't have mess plants are blissful thousands of years plants will keep on living in the sunlight rain nothing no worry they are semi conscious okay whereas human being is the only species in the universe totally universe who is miserable <laughs> the child of a human being is blissful because child does not know past does not know future child lives in the present living in the present is blissful okay but child is innocent innocent means no knowledge innocence is bliss because i don't know i don't know about myself i don't know about the world that's child so the not the innocence is bliss the misery comes from the knowledge i know something about myself i know something about the world so the self knowledge a wrong knowledge self identity and knowledge of the world causes the misery the child as it grows into adult becomes miserable because knowledge means what is knowledge anyway please tell me knowledge means recorded facts that's all what is recorded in memory is knowledge okay knowledge always belongs to the past knowledge is not present present moment is the reality knowledge is always of the past animals are blissful because they are in present moment child is blissful because they are in present moment the moment you become adult you lose the present moment you start living in the knowledge of yourself knowledge of the world past knowledge memory is past about past they using the memory you project the future so you start living in unreality because past is not real future is not real this moment is real you must miss the reality of this moment so now you start searching for happiness without understanding living in the present is the happiness we seek happiness we seek incidents we seek situations we seek relationships to get happiness in reality happiness is not because of situation not because of person happiness simply to be in the present moment the entire universe other than miserable human being are in the present moment either consciously or unconsciously <laughs> so there is a shiva says nanam bandha your knowledge is a bondage you think something else is their bondage no your knowledge is a bondage 
knowledge about who am I? Means wrong identity, knowledge about world. Both cause bondage. Knowledge is all about memory, and memory is always about the past, and nothing in the memory is real. Memory is useful, but not real. Memory is a record of things happened. Okay. So, since you live in the illusion of the reality of past, misery is there. The, it is not, people keep on looking for happiness from outer incident, outer situation, without understanding to be in the present moment itself is happiness. The moment you start looking for happiness in event or situation, you are gone. Because all your understanding about happiness situation is based on the past record. And past record will never repeat in the universe. That's why the spiritual teaching says never look for experience. And most of the spiritual seekers are lost in seeking experience. I want that experience. You want that experience. Because all the experience, desire for experience comes from past memory. Past memory projects experience. And that experience is never real. In no experience can be repeated. Universe is unique. So you'll miss the whole spiritual journey. Entire spiritual journey is to be in the present moment. To be happy. Because the present moment is the gateway to the presence, which is your real nature. Present moment is a manifest reality. Presence is what you are. Without going to the present moment, you cannot go to presence. How to go to present moment? Become aware of the body, become aware of breath, body and breath are in present moment. Then you go to presence. Who am I? So present moment is the gateway to presence. Instead of that, we get lost in seeking happiness in from parent, uh, some relationships, friends, objects, everything. The only, in the entire universe, human being is nothing but tiny little population. Tiny little. Entire universe is in bliss. Either unconsciously or consciously. There's a shloka, there's a shloka in Upanishad. Ratham, um, I don't remember full shloka. The winds blow blissfully. Okay, the rains flow, rains, rains, earth is blissful. The entire universe is blissful. Okay, so entire universe is blissful. Only tiny little pop beings called human beings are miserable. So entire universe is blissful. God is blissful, either consciously or unconsciously. It doesn't matter. <laughs> now, God has become unconsciously blissful, uh, un uh, uh, unconsciously miserable in human being, forgetting himself and forgetting who is he. So now he starts seeking. And the seeking will take him to Dani. He'll become Dani. And the Dani realizes God. As the Sri Krishna says, there are four types of bhakta. Artho, Jidnasu, Arthati, Dani cha Bhartashva. Artha means somebody suffering. Jidnasu means somebody seeking. Arthati means somebody who wants money. Dani. Tesha, Dani, Nitya Yukta. Out of that, Dani is myself. That means God realizes himself in the form of Dani. So, Dnani and God are not different in that sense. Full fledged Dnani. There is half big Dnani, partial Dnani, that's different. Eh? <laughs> Fully enlightened being is one with God. <laughs> and there are people who think I am Dnani also. So, all those things are, I am leaving all the categories. I am saying a fully enlightened being, fully Dnani is God only. Because God realizes himself in the form of Dnani. So, that is the end of a dream of God. God will wake up now. <laughs> So now we have a sloka, we have a, uh, this thing, right? Uttishto, Tishta Govinda, Uttishta Garadadja, Uttishta Kamala Kanta, Kailokya Mangalam Kuru, right? Understand? So, Uttishto, Tishta Govinda, God is sleeping in you. Wake up! <laughs> Wake up and realize yourself, that is a, that is a song. <laughs> so God is realizing, sleeping in you. Wake up! Realize your true nature. That is the meaning of that. Uttishto, Uttishta Govinda, Uttishta Garadaja. So, our whole problem is we think that we are doing a spiritual journey. We are doing sadhana. Okay? 
it is god who will do everything through us <laughs> and god knows what is to be done also what are you we are just the instrument of god nimitta matram that father also god's wish see there's no two wishes my wish and god's wish we have a apparent wish so we have a apparent free will that apparent free will also is god's will <laughs> you have apparent free will <laughs> so entire universe is nothing but dream of bhagwan shri man narayana paramatma para brahma everything universe is para brahma narayana only how is he narayana para brahma only everything in universe exists the sun exists tree exists moon exists river exists plant exists everything is existence existence doesn't change but existence takes different forms takes the form of a tree takes the form of an animal takes the form of a monkey forms change but existence itself doesn't change it's like water takes the form of wave bubble foam but water doesn't change like that existence takes various forms and forms dissolve forms appear and dissolve in wash water ocean appears waves appears bubble appears vapor appears disappears like that so this appearance and disappearance is called dream it's called maya all of us are temporary appearance in that and all all that appears in the uh, that uh, dream is narayana only that's other than narayana there's nothing shrimad narayana that's why if you see in our sanatan tradition we take one stone stone we call it saligrama saligrama is uh, taken from gandaki river gandaki river is ancient so in that saligrama stone we take worship, worship as a vishnu only the your stone is vishnu only the tree is vishnu nara uh, the river is vishnu sun is vishnu everything is vishnu that's why vishnu sasnama says vishwam vishnu no shankaro vishnu himself has appeared to vishwa so sir looking for god 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 where are you what you are seeing is god in the form of world what you are seeing is god in the form of plants living beings everything is god only existence but have you given attention to existence you will give attention to only form look at the tree how serene how silent how blissful trees look at the cloud cloud exists serene silent look at the wind look at the sun look at the moon the existence aspect of everything is serene silent any time space serene silent but our attention is on form the forms are mithya appears and disappears but the existence doesn't appear and disappear the totality of existence is god including you so that existence is perceived in the form of tree perceived in the form of sun perceived in the form of moon so the perception of existence is what we call as object and why perception happens because sense organs are limited what is infinite existence cannot be seen when you perceive it it appears to be seen when you use its sense organs sense organs limit the give the form the form is because of sense organs suppose your eyes have x ray vision then if person is this in front of sitting in front of you is not is just appears like a bone skeleton see through the per, if you if you have a gamma vision you can't see the person there in front of you so your sense organs give a form and we start believing the form is real it is not real it is reality is form is given by your sense organs tomorrow you have a what you call as color blindness so then you, there's no you will never understand there's a color in the world so sense organs gives the form and mind gives the name for what existence and this form and name are recorded in memory the form and name are temporary snapshots of reality temporary snapshots momentary snapshots 
in reality there's nothing called a form and name just pleasing of what appears the reality is infinite possibilities that i call as quantum field of all possibilities the moment you observe it one one possibility emerges how is that i will say okay and when you are a child we are looking at the sky oh the cloud because that time we uh, unfortunately unfortunately we didn't have tv and uh, movie and all we are only tv was the sky in the sky oh the horse is coming oh no no elephant is coming no no horse and elephant are fighting all clouds there's neither cloud or nor elephant we are super imposing horse and elephant on the clouds it's just energy pattern appears and dissolves similarly everything in universe is a energy pattern appears and dissolves you are energy pattern the energy started as two cells one from father or mother the energy pattern grow it became a big ball some sense organs develop the energy pattern born grows up energy is changing constantly changing energy means constantly changing okay then one day it becomes old and disappears it's like a wave born grows up and disappears we are just a energy wave appearing and disappearing but what happens is that energy wave we take a snapshot and that snapshot we call as a person that snapshot we call as a situation and that we record in memory but once we record the by the time you record it's already the situation has changed the wave energy has changed what you record has no relevance to what is there already energy keeps on changing no so in that way what is in memory is not real at all it is a record which is used for part transaction i can compare memory to a map of switzerland switzerland is a beautiful place once in some time in life i want to go to switzerland or iceland once in a while lifetime i want to go to iceland okay that's my dream they have same what is got a uh, bucket list before i kick bucket kick bucket means die i want to go to switzerland or iceland right and i buy a nice atlas is there a switzerland in that is there iceland in that atlas iceland is there and switzerland is there but that is not use that's not real okay that's that's useful what is not real does not mean not useful memory is not real but is useful so events and situation recorded memory are freezing one snapshot of the entire big thing which is happening energy wave but what happens is that child has no memory child has no past future adult has memory he sees a situation and takes record from memory tries to superimpose that on the present situation okay what is unreal he superimposes the present situation and then starts believing that present situation is real and then starts experiencing it and that again gets creates impression again it goes to the memory so you are trapped in the memory experience interpretation impression recording now what has become you are no longer a human being there's no consciousness consciousness become dull you are a living machine a programmed machine our entire life is a programmed machine recording happens recording ritual happens immediately you respond experience uh, imp uh, imp uh, imp superimpose and experience only when you start living in the present moment you are living otherwise you are not living you are a biological robot i call that's bio boot so if you want to come out of it start living in the present moment in the present moment everything is nitya nutana ever new have right now because my flow is okay ever new in the present moment right in in the present moment everything is nitya nutana
have you seen the difference between a child experience life and you experience life for the child even animals like dog and all when you take out they are actually so attentive alert this life in their eyes we had a dog when we take it out wow. same street the mind is fresh but what happens is when we go out our mind is dull memory will come and cover it this i already know okay you the past covers the present so what happens our consciousness becomes dull our experience becomes dull blurred so if you start living in the present moment your experience becomes lively that's why a person is enlightened there's a light in his eyes actually there'll be eyes will be shining know that so people say enlightened being has a powerful eyes why powerful eyes is there eyes are shining because the vision or vision or experience is not covered by memory it's a fresh experience any moment that's why enlightened being lives in the heaven when he is alive <laughs> right that is the state of a jivan mukta he is in the heaven blissful state it doesn't mean there is no pain there's no suffering there's no disease there's no disease nothing everything is there but he is blissful because his memory is not blurring his awareness are you getting what i'm saying memory is not superimposing and covering the present moment he is like a child looking at everything with a fresh eyes fresh vision but our life is a suffering because take from memory will superimpose on the present and then we will bring the future also and that also will superimpose now and future is not there it will superimpose on now <laughs> interpretation imagination superimposition it will completely destroy our experience of present moment that experience of present moment is happiness we destroy the experience of present moment and we start looking for happiness in the objects and situation which based on the past record that means we have started living in complete illusion delusion <laughs> go what life we are living hmm? so enlightenment means first come to the present moment start living in the present moment moment to moment and that is happiness that's bliss that's called heaven then realize the presence which is beyond so present moment is here and now presence is nowhere from here and now to nowhere nowhere means not time not space beyond so otherwise we are lost somewhere <laughs> and that somewhere is the past or somewhere is the future so let us look at in the nature everything we are recording is a event there are no events in nature because in a continuous changing move continuous moving thing there's nothing called specific event but we record it as an event and we take that as a reality a person situation as a real we freeze the person in time space uh, memory and we start dealing with the memory person with the real person sitting in front what are you dealing with with whom you are dealing you are dealing with the image of the person sitting in front of you not only you are dealing with the image of the person you are dealing with your own image also your image dealing with the other person's image and there is no reality at all in any relationships this typically happens in marriage just first time in marriage husband and wife look into eyes each other and talk to each other because both don't know what other person is thinking and talking <laughs> so within within soul right husband knows what wife is going to talk wife knows husband what wife is going to husband has the image of the wife 
wife has image of the husband both will do mental dialogue i say this you say this you say this i this tu 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 my thing finally they'll burst out <laughs> conclusion <laughs> both are not speaking about reality at all they have never seen each other in life <laughs> they only live with images <laughs> images of past speak with image think with image and you are also image where are you hmm? so you have image of yourself in memory you are not there any time see in, when when you when you take any photograph the photograph will not be there all your memories you are not there no no there is a body the body what you have taken when you take the image of the memory that has changed now is it is it wave so your body has changed your image has changed uh, image is frozen but you have changed the body has changed the person's image the person's body has changed but the image you are using to remember oh this is what happened in that way once you start living in the memory you are living in unreality the child is spontaneous so now when it comes to gnani he also spontaneous gnani is not living from memory gnani will use the memory but gnani does not live memory as real adnani lives memory as real memory is the only reality for adnani for gnani present moment is the only reality and present moment is always fresh because wave keeps on changing energy keeps on changing so dnani even if he talks on the same topic twice he will not talk the same thing <laughs> he will talk different things <laughs> because it's a fresh a fresh situation for him whereas a scholar even if he talk 100 times he will repeat the same 100 times because he lives for the memory <laughs> i don't think you have to understand a scholar or a common man when he speaks there will be no fluency in what he speaks because he has to think it means he has access memory okay he has thought process will be cut because he has to go and take from memory right memory is subconscious for a gnani the conscious and subconscious barrier has collapsed there is no access time words will be keep on flowing from subconscious to conscious there's no barrier there there's no fetching there's no bringing something from memory so that's why the word starts flowing in the in terms of gnani words of wisdom they are ever fresh not stale and our memory is nothing but our time for example 8 hours have passed sun sunrise is one event sunset is another event so between these two i call as time two recorded memory records between them i call as time but there's no two records sunset and sunrise is just an energy moment at that energy moment i make it as frozen and that i call as time basically we the nature is digital uh, analog nature is continuing we digitize nature and try to digitize means take samples out of nature and say time and space <laughs> digital signal processing <laughs> nature is analog continuously changing person time space everything is continuously changing there's nothing everything is fresh ever nitya nitya rutana that's why if you see gods also our god is called katyayini katyayini is my daughter's name right katyayini is a goddess for us so katyayini is eternally young katyayini means katyayini represents power of consciousness to uh, movement power of movement in consciousness eternally young it cannot become old at all nitya nutana shri krishna when he is shown he is never shown as a old man is always nitya nutana consciousness also new prakriti is also new but jiva becomes old because we live in the memory <laughs> tell so how does this all happen para brahma narayana pure consciousness 
is resting. There's no other than Brahman, Parabrahman. The Lakshmi or Maya Shakti in the consciousness which is hidden wants to project the universe to know Parabrahman to know himself. Wants to create mirror for self. So the world and the people and the society on the living beings and non-living beings is a mirror for God. Reflection. Brahman to experience the power the entire universe is created. Brahman to realize the power and glory the universe is created. So Brahman realizes his own power and glory in the form of Jnani. Brahman appreciates his power and glory in the form of Bhakta. Brahman experiences life in the form of Jiva. Now, all these experiences are Maya. Brahman, Parabrahman is not affected. And world what appears is real as long as you are experiencing it. So, a desire arises, deep desire arises in Brahman to know self. This desire is called Parashakti, Lakshmi or Maya. So then a creative power comes into picture. The creative power is called Maya Shakti. For a modern English language, I say belief. Belief is something word you can understand. For anything to happen, belief is required. Right? Belief is the power of our life. So you have come here with the belief that this fellow Prabhuji can speak something which can keep us entertained. Yeah. <laughs> Some belief has brought you. Belief gives you some, and belief means something you without it's based on certain assumption. You don't verify the assumption. If you verify the assumption, it becomes knowledge. So Parabrahman takes a belief called something other than me exists. That's a primary belief. Okay, something other than me exists is the primary belief that becomes what you call as Mahatattva. Mahatattva is the manifestation of Sat. Sattva. Sat becomes Sattva. Sat means existence. So I exist. Brahman exists. Brahman alone exists. Brahman says something else exists. There's something else exists becomes Mahatattva. Sat becomes Sattva. Okay, then the project starts. Something else exists. Something else exists. The land, mountain, trees, plants, everything, all these things comes into picture. So there is a belief in the existence of something. Pramahat, Ahankara, Manasu, Buddhi, Jiva, all those things are created. Appears. Projected. Okay. All these are projected. By whom? Parabrahma. By whom? By you. <laughs> uh, the real I is projecting all this and forgets himself, gets immersed in this whole experience. It's immersive experience. So you can be very happy. Mobile addiction, WhatsApp addiction, or uh, TV addiction, coffee addiction is nothing new. It is a long time immemorial. <laughs> Addicted to experience life in various ways. <laughs> forget himself, goes through suffering, finally, Brahman discovers himself in the form of Nan. So, something other than me exists is the primary belief. Then, with that belief, you start experiencing life. You give a reality to this thing. Now, this becomes a multiple reflection. Right? So, you take a belief and create something that's a reflection. Now, the reflection you start believing is real. So then real reflection gives belief experience. Then experience reflects something. So it's, it's actually what we call as continuously belief, creation, reflection, experience, impression, belief, projection or creation, projection of creation, 
experience impression belief like that it will keep on going this is like two parallel mirrors reflecting each other and infinite reflection happens there in the parallel mirrors you want to show the infinite reflection this reflection is this reflection. this is like and it will be it will happen infinite times eternal so this is what life is world is, world is. okay at in reality nothing has happened to parabrahma everything is a rip. everything is a uh, belief projection experience impression again belief again projection so now what is what is the way to come out you have to cut this belief you don't have to work at the experience level you have to cut the belief level <laughs> where are the source of problem source of problem is belief so the, when you start inquiring into belief who am i the belief collapses in this whole cycle belief projection experience uh, impression belief this cycle is an infinite cycle so you have to cut this cycle somewhere and most of the people try to cut the cycle at the experience level <laughs> it doesn't work that way <laughs> so they will go to different types of spiritual experience i want different spiritual i want matter spiritual okay for in spiritual spiritual they guru to go to guru to guru ashram to ashram okay temple to temple okay mountain they want to change the experience level it has to be changed at the belief level as long as you are at the experience level you are again in maya because it's the effect it's not the cause the source is the belief who am i is the source cut the belief by inquiring who am i really then this loop gets cut belief expression or uh, be belief projection or expression imp uh, experience impression again belief again projection this cycle will get cut when you question the belief that's why ramana maharshi says ask who am i find out the source of the world this is infinite mirror this reflection will go on forever and ever punarapi jananam punarapi maranam punarapi janani jatare shayanam ye samsare bahud sare kripaya pare pahi murare this whole cycle of infinite mirror reflection will only stop when you cut at the source belief level not at the reflection level because reflection is not that the moment you are trying to change the reflection level again you are giving strength to the reflection oh experience i want to change you are giving important you are giving to reality the experience <laughs> and the giving reality experience of the strength of the belief again so you are trapped so guru breaks his head and says don't go after experience she says i want experience <laughs> give me some experience so that i can realize myself i'll say experience is not real no no if experience is there only i'll realize reality so you are going at the <laughs> you are giving strength to experience reply reality reality experience do not give yeah, all gurus will teach do not go after experience the real gurus find out who is the experience who am i but most of the shishas are after experience <laughs> see if this guru doesn't give experience let me find another guru who has experience <laughs> you are giving the moment you go after experience you are giving reality to maya and the moment you give reality go you will create new impressions we will never get out of the cycle don't worry about experience my dear sir find out the experience sir become free entire spiritual journey in anywhere in the world is search for new experience better experience okay so people keep on going from one place to other place for that and can people take drugs i have seen people who take drugs and they feel like god expanded throughout the universe that experience doesn't change them in fact their experience destroys them if you feel like god and experience should change you in fact that they that destroys them nervous system experience is not the key liberation inquiring into who am i is the key who is the experiencer is the key then only is infinite mirror infinite reflection can be broken punarapi janam can be broken 
That's why self inquiry, Atma Vichara, or Brahma Vichara will save you. Nothing else can save you. Nani, Nahi, Nani, Satisha Point, Nana alone liberates. Nana alone causes liberation. What is bhakti, devotion, is nothing but experience. What is yoga, is nothing but experience, seeking experience. What is kriya, is nothing but experience. What is jnana, is seeking the experiencer. When you seek the experiencer, you start understanding wrong beliefs, assumptions about the reality. The assumptions go, reality alone remains. That is called Sat, Chit, Ananda, Brahman. The infinite mirror, Brahman, appears as Maya, or Brahman using Maya, projects the world, and constant, there's a reflection in the co reflection, constant reflection happens, infinite mirror. Is that clear? Any questions? No questions? There's a question on the Zoom. The experience changes the belief is another belief. See, experience is end result. Understand, in this whole process, source is the belief and end result is the experience. Are you getting what I'm saying? But in this cycle, we are saying belief is projection, experience, impression, new belief. So the expression See, the so the, the whole thing is belief expression or projection, experience, and impression. Impression can strengthen the belief or weaken the belief. See, strengthen the belief or weaken the belief, but it doesn't remove the belief. Removing the belief is through inquiry. You are in the cycle only. It will start with another cycle. Prakriya is not weakening the belief. Prakriya is a prakriya, Vedanta Prakriya is removing the assumptions from the belief. So whereas experience and belief cycle, what she's saying, I have a belief that some experience, good experience will change my belief. Uh, it will change your belief, but still you are stuck in the belief. Okay, now you want a better experience. Okay, so basically, basically you are giving, a, already you are giving a reality to the end product. Mm -hmm. It doesn't remove the belief. I'm saying it will start say, modifying the belief so that the cycle will continue in another belief. So what happened? The belief just changed. I mean, I'm saying I have a belief that God appears to be in front one front of the day. I'll change my life. So, okay, God appeared to be in front of the one day. So I'm very happy. So next day desire comes. I want to see God. Yesterday he came in blue dress. Today I want to see God in red dress. <laughs> so it starts another cycle. <laughs> And that's what happens to 99% of seekers in the world. Seekers. Okay. That's why Sri Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, repeat, Manishyanam Saseshu Kashitma Yatati Siddhaye Yatatama Pisiddhana Kashitma Veti Tattvataha. Billions of population, only a handful of people try to realize God. Most of the people are not realizing God, not for realizing God. They are after getting some experience, novelty experience. Okay, different type of experience. Finally, some people try to realize God. Manishanam Sarasvita Kashin Ma Veti Veti. Realize. Out of that also, only few will realize me. Veti Tattvataha. You have to go to root. Tattva. Not to the experience. Experience. Who am I? Only few. And they are closer to me. Sahakshi Krishna says. See, we have to say seed, plant, tree, fruits. Again, seed. Belief is the seed, and world experience is the fruit and tree. So, people are after that. People have to go to the root seed. 
fry the seed, destroy the seed, that entire cycle will be. If you are looking for liberation, if you are looking for joy, happiness, novelty, you go for the flowers and fruits. <laughs> it all depends on what you want. Most of the people don't, don't want that root. They want only the shoot, the fruit, the trees, experiences, very tough experiences. The entire spiritual journey has become experience to experience journey, experiential journey. Entire journey has to be inquiry. Who am I? All experiences are mithya, appear and disappear. There will be no experience which is permanent. So now, then the question comes. There are some people who had great experience, their life is transformed. Yes, the great experience transformed life, not because of experience, how they interpreted the experience. <laughs> Understanding of experience changed their life. And you look at anything in life, right? What do you call this experience? Please tell me. Okay. Okay. Let me do experience. Just hold your hand like this. Close your eyes and press your uh, fingers. Okay. Open your eyes. So you are, ha are you having the experience of hand now? Did you experience your hand? How was the experience? Describe. There's a pressure, right? Was there experience or was there knowledge of experience? <laughs> the experience is always knowledge. <laughs> when you press your hand, there's a pressure, right? Is there pressure or knowledge of pressure? If there's no knowledge of pressure, is there a pressure there? If there's no knowledge, is there a pressure there? We don't know means it's not there. So the pressure is nothing but knowledge. Knowledge is nothing but knowing, awareness. Awareness is Brahman all the time. In any experience, Brahman only is there. Knowing is the only experience we have ever had. <laughs> that appears as knowledge. Like knowing becomes knowledge. It's like a wave, goes back. Wave, goes back. So, when people say, I have experience, but I, I have theoretical knowledge, I don't have experience. What are you trying to say? Any experience is nothing but knowledge only. <laughs> right? Any experience is nothing but knowledge. See, people say, I have theoretical understanding of Vedanta. If you ask me a question, I'll write uh, one page, 100 pages, I'll pass the examination. But I don't have not realized. Understand? Why they are not realized is all your experience is a memory recording. All your knowledge of Vedanta is memory recording. You are able to record and write from memory. The moment you start living in the present moment and start using the record, then you are done. You are living in the memory, then you are not realized. You are living in the memory of Vedanta, you are not realized. Ask your question, I am Brahman, you will say, from memory. To become Brahman, to realize I am Brahman, you have to live in the present moment and realize the presence. Memory can be used. So, I don't have experience, it's false. I don't live in the present moment is the reality. <laughs> How we are escaping the reality, please understand. I don't have experience of Brahman. Are my dear, when did you start living in the present moment? Always you are living in the past or future. Brahman is always presence. Sat. No, no, I want experience of Brahman. You cannot have experience of Brahman. Because Brahman is the experiencer, experienced and the experience. Together. Triput is merged. There cannot be separate experience. Then what are you calling Brahman experience? If you are able to live in the present moment and realize the presence, that's called Brahman. People say, I want to experience a Brahman. I want to go to Samadhi. Samadhi means thoughtless state. The Samadhi or waking state, dream state, deep sleep state, or world is Brahman only. <laughs> Samadhi is nothing special. Then what are you trying to do in Samadhi? Samadhi, you are making your mind silent. By in some force. Way. Samadhi is also Mithya. <laughs> Only Dhana is Satya, which comes from the discrimination, Viveka and Vairagya. That's why one uh, monk, one Swamiji said, God is all pervading reality, Sat. People are trying to imprison God in Samadhi. 
<laughs> Why do you want to imprison God in Samadhi? Nothing wrong in Samadhi. You go to Samadhi and come back. But reality is ever present, eternally present. Only promise is reinterpretation of the reality. Your intellect is interpreting reality in the wrong way. Rope is being interpreted as snake. Cell is shell is being interpreted as gold, uh, silver. Correct your interpretation, you are done. Now question, what is the question? Yeah, there is a question in Zoom. Guru, when does the record come to use? When one has to live in the present moment, why is recording happening? So why is recording happening? Is the This is the question, right? Why is the recording happening? Recording is happening because you want to live in a, a transaction reality. You want to know your house address. You want to know... Uh, you have to take care of something, the recordings. If you don't want to take care of it, there's no record required. So recording is there for you to assist in your transaction life, which is apparent, which is unreal, but yes, it's there. So then, when you live in the present moment, how recording comes to use? Yes, it will come to use. In the present moment, there's a certain situation comes to you. Okay, normally what will happen? Our memory will come, overpower us. Before the person talks, we'll start shouting at the person. We don't, don't see what is happening in the present moment. We will interpret this present moment based on the past. If you are calm and live in the present moment, then you know what is the situation. Then you will take exactly what is the right response from memory to use it for responding. Otherwise, you are, you are actually unconsciously reacting to a situation. Only when you live in the present moment, you can act to a situation. Is that clear, Pratibha? Pradipa Krishna, is the question and answer clear? Interpretation of experience is also present. Is there interpretation of experience if I am in present? Present moment, when you are in present moment, the experience, experiencer, experienced and experiencer becomes experience. I said Triputi collapsed into experience. I have told now. Triputi in the present moment, what happens? Subject and object merge with the experience. Experience of see, I see. Uh, it is a fruit. In the present moment, the fruit and I, the seer, become one in see. Seeing is there. Then seeing is replaced by hearing. Hearing is replaced by smelling. Experience will change. Knowing doesn't change. Experience is there. But then I have to interpret the experience. That I is not there. After the experience. After the experience, I, the, what I can't, experience has to be interpreted. Then the normal ego mind will come and say, I, Prabhuji, I, Gayatri, experience it. Memory will come. In case of Nani, instead of memory coming, Sakshi will come. I am the Sakshi who is looking, having this experience. Then, what is Sakshi as Sakshi witness? Then, what is the appropriate reasons? Will be protected by the Buddhi. No, no, Sakshi, Buddhi, intellect is working under the guidance of Sakshi. See, in, in, in an ignorant person, intellect is guided by ego. Okay? So, some experience is happening, immediately you go and pass, okay, based on past memory, some re reaction will happen. In case of Nani, this ego is no longer guiding the intellect. Sakshi is guiding the intellect. Now, intellect has become pure. Intellect is not affected by Sakshi's interpretation of life. Ego, ego. Ego's interpretation of life is not there. Sakshi is there. Then intellect works under the guidance of Sakshi. That's what we can say. Listen carefully. Ego was driving intellect earlier. Now ego is not driving the intellect. Then ego is intellect is still working. Unbiased intellect is working. That unbiased intellect is called working under Sakshi. That unbiased intellect is able to take right decision. It also acts as a smart. But right decision, right action. See, under the guidance of ego, intellect was biased agent. When the ego is gone, intellect works under unbiased way. The appropriate decision. That means we will say, for say purpose saying, intellect work under the guidance of Sakshi. 
Sakshi is unbiased, unaffected. So now intellect will do choose the right decision. It's a spontaneous decision, spontaneous actions. Okay, this is my interpretation. It will be there. Interpretation will be there, but biases will not be there. What is required for this decision to be done? So Pratibha, is your question answered or not? You can unmute. Are you there? So, okay. So, ego is trying to collect the experience. Yes, ego is trying to collect the experience, newer and newer experiences. Either material experience, marriage experience, job experience, or uh, spiritual experience. Ego is a collector, like a stamp collector, ego is a collector of experiences. Ego lives on memory, ego lives on collect experiences. Accumulating experiences. Is it clear, Mala? Ah, Guruji. Fantastically clear, Guruji. Because uh, experience is what, what uh, I was getting, you know. I was not knowing where to separate. Definitely I was getting experiences, Guruji. N number okay. of experiences. And the Very separation good. was never happened. And okay. uh, this is how I have to separate because uh, I seeing uh, you, seeing Ramakrishna Paramahamsa, these were all like, you know, great people who has an experience, so they are great. This is the feeling that I always had, Guruji. They had an understanding, that's why, see, always, belief and understanding gives you experience, not the other way. Ha, Guruji. Understand? See, I have a belief that God will appear in front of me. God will appear. Ha. Okay. Ha, it is not that God appeared. That's why I got transformed. My deepest belief in God made God appear in front of me. The belief mm -hmm. results in experience. Ha, the depth of your belief, strength of your belief makes the ha. manifestation to happen. Paramatma, Paramatma is like a... Paramat level, there's nothing now. The biggest thing Paramatma level, water level, nothing has changed. Only wave level, things are changing. Wave and ocean level. Water level, there's no. Then no. the ocean level. Ocean level is Ishwara. Paramatma is not is not affected. Paramatma is not affected. Ocean is the world, Vishnu. That level, yes. That level, the Vishnu will maintain the creation, belief and creation to make sure that all living beings will get liberated, protected. That whole thing will continue. He will, at, at, at God level, Ishwara level or Vishnu level, he will have the belief as a creative tool. Tool for creation. Whereas an individual level, that tool becomes bondage. At God's level, Maya is a tool, instrument for projection. See, just understand. At deepest level, there's a vibration, desire to know that projected the world. In the projected world, Narayana took the form of Vishnu. But Vishnu knows I am Brahman, Parabrahman. He doesn't forget himself. Our doesn't take over him. So now everything is done as a creative play, Leela world. So your question is the forgetfulness is not there at Narayana level because there's Narayana level, there's no other. There's a projection at Narayana level which is called Vishnu. Is Ishwara. Ishwara has no forgetfulness. Ishwara has no Avarna. Ishwara knows I am Brahman. But Ishwara projects the universe using Maya as an instrument, tool. Whereas Ishwara appearing in the form of Jiva or Jiva, the Maya becomes bondage because tools are used indiscriminately, wrongly. You also have creative power. You also have power of Maya. So that power of Maya is limited in you and that you don't use, wield it properly. That power of Maya has to be used properly to get out of Maya. When the power of Maya, you forget yourself and start using power of Maya, you get trapped in the world. Jiva has a power of Maya limited, no? So, I want happiness. 
marriage is happiness so some husband gets created somewhere manufactured somewhere and you get married so <laughs> some creation happens <laughs> and i want happiness the child also is getting created so some maya you are using but you are using unconsciously that's called avidya maya the same maya when it is used for liberation called vidya maya who am i okay then we ask a question பிரதிபா <laughs> what you see outside is only projection right so now who is projecting who is sitting near you who is sitting near you who is that a wife identity in your project is shravan identity your identity is projecting shravan if if you say i yourself as wife then only the husband is there now So your wife identity is taking a husband wife identity, outer projection. So are you the wife? Then go beyond. I am the Sakshi. Then he, then the husband is not there. No headache. <laughs> <laughs> so go inside. Am I the wife? I am the Sakshi. If I am Sakshi, then whatever whatever husband says doesn't matter to me. Right. So now outer will not affect you. as you go deeper outer will not affect you finally you realize that there is no outer reality brahman so shall we close for the day anybody has a question nana is inquiry inquiry is non knowledge In, so there nana is two types acquire and inquire <laughs> you can know i'll tell you nana <laughs> nana acquire